What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and three trains, a total of three trains derailed yesterday, and it's only a matter of time before a situation like what happened in East Palestine is happening in a city or a town near you, or near me. I mean, we have trains derailing all over the place. It is insane. Meanwhile, the fallout from the train derailment in East Palestine is intensifying. And not just for the town of East Palestine, we are now seeing this situation go to the next level. As you all know, there is tons and tons of solid toxic waste in East Palestine that needs to be disposed of. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gallons of liquid toxic waste that needs to be disposed of. All of this stuff has to go somewhere. But no one wants it in their town. Understandably so. So we've already talked about it numerous times on this channel, but they've been shipping this stuff all over the United States. The only problem is most elected public official, like government officials, like I'm talking like mayors and stuff like that. They have no idea sometimes the type of chemicals and toxic waste that is coming into their community. Various communities across the U.S. found out that this toxic waste was coming to a site near them. Some of these communities have blocked this toxic waste from coming in. And like I said earlier, understandably so. No one wants East Palestine toxic waste down the street from their homes. But you see, the reality is... This type of toxic waste has already been down the street from these people's homes. It just took a situation like East Palestine gaining so much attention for people to realize what was happening in their own backyards this entire time. Now, so far, we know that some of this stuff was going to Texas, Michigan, Indiana, Oklahoma. Those are just a few that I can name off the top of my head. Some of these areas, like I said, they blocked this stuff from coming in. But now the EPA just issued a warning, basically saying, y'all better let this stuff in or there's going to be consequences. They are trying to strong arm this stuff in to these people's communities. They're trying to take a stand and refuse to take it. Meanwhile, this stuff is sitting there brewing and simmering in East Palestine and this an all-around ugly situation, like I warned you all, it would be. You know, when something like this happens, people don't think about the lasting effects. People don't think about the political fallout, if you will. You know, we don't want to, I, I personally don't want to make this a political thing. I don't want to dive too much into politics while covering this story. Because I think both political sides try to take advantages uh, or try to take advantage of crises for their own agendas or what have you. But there's going to be political fallout from this. And, I mean, we have the EPA now warning places like Oklahoma that they have to take this waste or else. Or else. And I don't think that people in these communities are going to feel comfortable with that. Not only are they going to have to accept this toxic waste, but they're being strong-armed into doing so. So, all around messed up situation. I want you all to watch this clip, and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. Environmental Protection Agency ordering states to stop blocking shipments of contaminated waste from the Ohio train derailment for being sent to hazmat storage sites all across the country. As today, the EPA administrator is saying the cleanup in East Palestine will take months. Correspondent Evan Lambert is live, and Evan, Oklahoma and other states are refusing to accept these shipments. 
Nicole, the fact that states don't want this toxic waste is threatening to delay the cleanup process. Now the EPA is saying what they're doing is unlawful. Current pile, uh, what's piled up, we think is about 26,700 tons. So we still have a long, long way to go. At the site of the train derailment in East Palestine, the toxic soil is piled high. Now, as Norfolk Southern works to clear the site, the EPA is warning of a new roadblock. States trying to keep the contaminated waste from Ohio out of their facilities, which are designated sites for safe disposal. Friday, EPA Administrator Michael Regan warned those states that it's, quote, impermissible and unacceptable to block shipments on their own. We are reminding all states that any attempts to impede interstate shipments of hazardous waste threatens the integrity of the system. Regan says the plan is to clear the site in East Palestine over the next three months. But last weekend, Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt blocked a shipment of waste from East Palestine from being dropped off at a landfill facility in his state. After complaints in the last few weeks from officials in Texas and Michigan, the EPA itself paused similar shipments. As East Palestine continues to struggle with the fallout of the toxic spill and burn, far from eastern Ohio, three other trains derailed in a single day Thursday. One in Arizona, one in Washington state spilling diesel fuel, and in Kentucky, a third train carrying automobiles derailed after it tried to avoid a semi-truck. Once again, putting the spotlight on safety in the railroad industry, where there is a bipartisan effort in Congress to make freight rail safer. And as these other derailments show, accidents can happen in any state. The EPA making the point that waste facilities handle material like this every day, and it needs to be disposed of safely somewhere. Nicole? That is true, but no one wants it where they are. Personally, I believe that we live in a day and age where people are going to require more transparency than before. We live in a day and age when, where... If we really wanted to, and we re really wanted to put our minds to it and take the time, we could get down to the bottom of a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? We have the power of the internet at our disposal. There are a lot of things that our government used to be able to do in the dark that they can no longer do in the dark because we have the ability to do all of this research, to gather all of this knowledge, and to connect with people all around the world. So we we live in a day and age where if things are happening in secrecy, it's automatically going to set off red flags for everybody. And what was happening is they were quietly, secretly transporting this stuff into people's towns. And that, regardless if this is regular protocol or whatever you want to call it, that's going to set people off. None of you want this stuff near you. I don't want this stuff near me. We all want this stuff out of East Palestine. But where, does this, where is this stuff going to go? Ultimately, regardless of how anyone feels about it, it's going to end up, you know, getting dispersed all over America. Which is why I said since day one of my coverage that we will all somewhat be affected by this. Now, my problem is, every place that I've found that they are sending this stuff so far, it are places that have tons of violations. They're places who have had tons of lawsuits and problems in the past. And I mean from Texas to Michigan to Indiana. All of these facilities that I've been able to figure out where they're sending this stuff so far, all have shady past. Which, you know, in turn, when I think about it, if I researched every facility, uh, facility across America that stores and disposes of toxic waste, they're all probably the same. You know, may, maybe that's the case. But the three or four that I know of, I mean, they've had violations out the woozaw just this year, dozens and dozens of violations, lawsuits, you name it. They're not even living up to the EPA standards, yet EPA is telling us, hey, this is okay, yeah, whatever. 
But we know that the EPA will contradict themselves. The EPA will and already has contradicted their own science, their own rules and their own regulations, just in order to fit the narrative that they want to get across in this East Palestine situation. So what's going to come of this? Are we going to see lawsuits? Are we going to see states refuse to take this stuff? And if they do, what comes next? Like if a state just, just straight up refuses this stuff, then what can be done to them? You know what I mean? So we're going to experience or we're going to witness who knows from here. But it's going to get interesting. It's going to get interesting. Meanwhile, the people of East Palestine are suffering and that situation ain't getting any better. But we're seeing the effects that a catastrophe like this could cause. Rippling effects. Rippling effects that affect our politics, affect our social life, affect our health, affect our economy. You name it. Insane. How... The, the ripples and the waves that something like this could cause throughout our country. But let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.